Hello and welcome to my stream today. It's going to be a complicated one. Um, I'm going to be playing as many dolphin based games as I can and I do have some parameters for this. Uh, most of them are going to be games where you play as a dolphin um, and yeah I guess I'll explain a bit more as we go on but um, there's a lot of material to cover so I might skip quickly through a few of the games but I want to give them all um, some attention. So, like I said, we are going to be swapping around a lot. We're starting, um, we will be going in chronological order <laughs> through the many eras. Um, we're starting in the second console generation way back in 1983. Um, we have a game called simply Dolphin on the Atari 2600. And it was, as you can see down there, it was published by Activision. Um, and how do I... okay. Yeah, very simple controls. I think the Atari 2600 was a one-button system um, and a joystick. So in this one you play as a dolphin. The back of the box uh, suggests that it's a female dolphin and you have to escape this squid. So these currents that are coming along represented by an arrow um, ugh, will slow you down or speed you up. And there's a rather innovative feature where the game sound, all you can hear is this pulsing sound which represents the dolphin sonar. And if that tone is lower, that means the gap that you're aiming for between the seahorses will be uh, uh, lower, lower down on the screen, uh, close to the ocean floor. Oh, I missed, the, I missed the seagull. Apparently that gives you invincibility. Um, so you can hear the tone really high, which means that it'll be up near the top. Oh, you can actually hop over the the, the, the seahorse barrier as well. Okay, cool. Let's at least try and get a seagull. Let's see what we see what happens. See, it's interesting because you have to focus on the audio cues. Oops. Yeah, you can turn around at will. Oops. And I used that just then to dodge the squid, actually, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, it's a very simple game, as expected of the era. Um, it was made by a one-man team, um, a guy by the name of Matthew Hubbard. He had previously made a game with a nautical theme called Submarine Commander. Um, when searching for games of this type, uh, you find a lot of games about divers and submarines, but that's not the kind of thing that I am looking into today, and generally, I would say... Ooh. Yes, okay, we got the invincibility, so now we're chasing the squid, and we attack it. Nice. And get a point bonus. So yeah, pretty simple game. Um, let's move on to the next one, because I think we've seen most of what can be got from that one. So... Um, this, yeah, and bear with me, like I said, I'm switching a lot of inputs and stuff. So if there's any audio issues, uh, please let me know, but sometimes I guess they can't be avoided. Um, hopefully the audio is coming through. Uh, <laughs> Mitchell's here, hello, welcome. He um, has just watched an ad for some, th some PS4 feature. Um, okay, so the next game is called Fathom, um, and I found this one much more interesting than Dolphin. Uh, the premise of the game, as explained on the back of the Intellivision box, uh, there's a few ports of the game. I'm playing the Atari 2600 one because that's the only one I could get working well, um, but here we see this is uh, Neptune's daughter, Neptina who has been imprisoned by the Titans. Uh, they also broke um, Neptune's tridents into pieces. And you're playing as Proteus, a member of Neptune's court, who has the ability to transform in between a dolphin and a seagull. But I get that ability by picking up certain things. So that, that star was a piece of the trident. Um, I think that'll let me transform. No, I need to pick up something else on the status screen down there. There we go. So I think with enough seahorses, 
uh, picking up enough, enough seahorses lets me transform. So if I jump up now, then now I am this eagle. And the controls change now. Um, as a dolphin, you aim the dolphin and hold down the one button to move. But here, pressing the button flaps the seagull's wings. Um, now I collect clouds, and that gives me the next star. As I said, there are a few ports of this game. This is the Atari 2600 version. I think the Intellivision version might be the most full-featured or the most uh, fleshed out. They're all uh, programmed by different people. Um, so I've died. Does that mean I lose? Yeah, I lost all my progress. That's okay. We'll give it another go. We'll at least try and um, clear this initial stage. Supposedly, once you free Neptina, you can then... Oh. Okay, missed him. <laughs> I'll go back up. It's a little confusing, actually, how the progression works from screen to screen here. I was sort of auto-scrolling down a corridor of um, seaweed, and then those jellyfish kind of disappeared. Mm. All right, well, we'll try again. What was I saying? The Yeah, the Intellivision version seemed possibly the most impressive, and it, it certainly had the most impressive box art, or sorry, cover, because um, there's more information on the back about the premise of the game. Oh gosh, so low on energy. I don't know how to restore that. I think the seahorse pickups will give you more. Yep, so holding down the button and aiming the dolphin makes it move. Okay, I'll save. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, Gibbons, um, yep, so Wolf confirms the auto is working. Gibbons internet is bad, but he's still here. Good to, good to have you. Um, but yeah, they, they both seem very impressed with the game, which is good. I, I think it's pretty cool too, especially for the era. Um, so yeah, the ports that I heard of were for Intellivision, Atari 2600, ColecoVision, and for the TI-99, um, whatever it is, a computer, I guess. All right, so now I have three parts of the trident. Let's avoid these blackbirds. I think the screen loops because this is the left edge of the volcano and I was just at the right edge. And trying to pass that is too hazardous, so... Oh, my, my health is just ticking down as we go on. All right, the fourth piece must be on that jellyfish screen. So we'll go turn back into a dolphin, save real quick, and hopefully we can rescue Neptina and finish up here. I won't go to the second screen, a second game or whatever it is. Hmm, okay. Yeah, the, the, the back of one of the boxes, I don't remember which one, boasts, um, or possibly it was an advertisement, boasts that there's over 150 screens of gameplay. Um, maybe I need to go back into bird mode. Ouch. Yeah, I don't think that actively hurts me, but um, your energy does tick down over time. Hmm. Oh, okay, that was it. I guess in this version there's only three parts of the trident. So there we go. Um, and that apparently unlocks a harder mode in some way. I'm not sure what the difference is, but it, you know, the the game instructions describe it in pretty flowery language that you're going to a new harder sea or something. But in, in these old games, um, I assume it's pretty much the same. Anyway, that was Fathom. Pretty interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I think I've said everything I was going to say about it. It was developed by Imagic. came out in 1983, just like Dolphin. Um, hello, Danger Mouse. She's here too. Good to see you. Um, we're two games into our Dolphin showcase, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know if Mitch is being completely serious, but he's saying this is very reminiscent of that game company. Um, a screen of gameplay. Well, this is one screen, and this is another screen. Uh, and yeah, um, yeah, okay, that's it. Um, so far, this obviously, this um, whole journey to seek out 
dolphin and underwater themed games was inspired by my discovering echo at the start of this year and so far this game is the closest of the two <laughs> uh, to yeah capturing that spirit of echo it's got the mythology aspect and the, the mysteries of the sea um, it's a relatively large open game world for the time um, and yeah I'm just pretty impressed by it but let's move on now so that was the Atari 2600 we're done with that now and we're going to move on to another console, which technically is in the next generation of consoles, the Commodore 64. Now I'll switch over the, there we go. So on the Commodore, we're going to be looking at first a game called C Speller. This is a pseudo educational game and luckily it loads pretty quickly. Um, Commodore 64 games could come on tape or floppy disk and sometimes loading uh, information from that uh, medium into RAM could take a long long time. Um, oh hang on let me disable that stupid CRT filter because it comes on every time you launch the program. I also now remember that I need to set up my controller every time I launch this emulator so bear with me okay good all right we're good to go <laughs> oh wolf was actually being 80% serious he was um, reminded of flow or journey going around collecting objects and experimenting with the new controls of each section yeah okay cool I like that um, yeah so Fathom was very cool. This one is a little bit simpler. On each screen you have these so-called, uh, actually I don't remember what they're called, but they're, they were coral of some kind that have letters on them. Um, and as the dolphin you need to pick up one of them. Uh, oops, that's right, I forgot to also, while I was setting up my controller, I need to assign a button because the Commodore 64 also had at least fire and alt fire. So there we go. Oh we got Ed. I was trying to get it but that's okay. Yes. Now for each... Um, what can I do for this one? Let's get rid of SA. So yeah, I'm playing as a dolphin and I'm helping out some people in this submarine for some reason. Perhaps I'm a trained dolphin who um, assists with research. I don't know. So if you can, um, it's good to pick up multiple words with one uh, combo. It's more efficient. Um, the Holy Grail is getting three at once, but I haven't managed to do that yet. Um, pod, rod, and cod. I could do that. Excellent. Of course, I only needed two more to fill up that bar. Nice. And yeah, the background's pretty nice. Very colorful. Coral reef kind of thing. This is pretty quiet. Um, there is some amount of sounds going on. Let me see if I can boost that. Um, no, I can't really. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there's not much to the sound anyway. Um, and also there's not much to the game. Um, I think we might stop that one there because we've seen enough of that. But yeah, um, it was made by a company called Childware Corporation who mostly made educational games and this is no different. But yeah. You play as a dolphin, so that's why I wanted to show it. All right. This is the big one now. And hopefully this is showing up on the screen. Yep, that looks fine. So that, I think that's the name of a cracker, possibly, um, for the ROM that I got here. <laughs> yes. I am going in a strictly chronological order, so as Wolf says, that Sea Speller doesn't quite beat Fathom. But... Um, uh, hopefully there'll be some more interesting ones coming up. We're into 1985 now. C Speller was 84. Um, yeah, yeah. 
just making making words by spelling them basically but even simpler than a lot of spelling games I've seen. So this one is a lot more ambitious. Um, this takes a long time to load so I'm going to put it in warp mode. I have a little uh, pane over here that you can't see that tells me what speed the game is running at. Um, it was 100% running at 100% uh, emulation speed and now it's 850% so we're just going to skip through the loading uh, as much as we can. There we go. So this is the Dolphin's Pearl, also known as the Dolphin's Rune. It has some silly subtitles. Um, I don't really get the difference between... Okay, so like the Dolphin has two modes. If I hold up, it'll go like this, but if I push the action button while holding up, it'll move up. So I don't know what the point of this is. Maybe it's kind of just neutral position, but you do move slightly, or do you? It's hard to tell. Anyway, this game has an absolutely gigantic game world um, and is quite slow paced and um, ponderous. No, that sounds negative. Meditative? I don't know. The um, instructions in the game box seem to have pretensions of, or delusions of grandeur. Um, it, it, is, it is impressive for the time, undoubtedly. Um, there's supposed to be a bit of sea ambience, but it's not really coming through. Let me try and shift the volume and see if that does anything for you guys. Turn it up. Did that make any difference? Um, I, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't look like it on my little uh, orbs panel here, but oh well. Basically there's just sort of a gentle roaring sound in the background as of waves. Um, but yeah, just ambience basically. There was a bit of a chirp as I got hit by another fish there as well. So I found the surface, that's nice. Um, so despite how slowly you move, you do actually get somewhere. And of course there is an objective to this game to find certain things. I believe I need to go deeper to get the next thing that I need. Mm -hmm. Maybe holding the action button makes you move only on cardinal directions, but then you can go diagonally. I, I don't really understand the controls, but um, yes, that's right, Wolf. Um, there's there's two different uh, game boxes that I've seen, at least two. Um, one of them calls it the game the Dolphin's Pearl colon, or there's like a like a tagline further down the box that says an Admacadium flight of fancy, and they spell flight with a Y and fancy with an IE because they're being fancy with an IE. Um, yeah, Admacadium is supposed to be the company that made it, but they don't seem to have any other games on file that I could find. Um, the other game box I saw calls it a dol uh, the Dolphin's Rune colon a poetic odyssey. Um, the history of the game is kind of interesting. I looked up uh, in the there's a guy called um, Dale Peterson who's credited with oh here we go. Okay, I found cave, I believe. The idea is that you have to find the right current to travel on that takes you to the ocean floor and then you find a rune that you have to decipher. Hence the secondary title or dolphin's rune. Uh, the dolphin's, the dolphin's rune? Yeah, the dolphin's rune, a poetic odyssey. Um, I don't know where Pearl comes into it. Oh, no, I lie, I do. Um, but I'll get to that. Anyway, Dale Peterson, um, sort of a technologist, uh, conservationist, uh, an author, uh, professor, smart guy, um, did some work with Jane Goodall, wrote her biography as well. Um, but yeah, when he was experimenting with computers in the 80s, he wrote, um, how does it say, He's credited for writing the original poem slash story and for designing the manual, and he was involved in this game as well. Um, <laughs> Mitch is trying to watch the stream and edit a podcast at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't sound very feasible. I don't think I should be going this deep. I don't know. I'm going to try going back up this way. Ooh, now I'm going faster. What happened? Yeah, this game is quite confusing, but... 
that also kind of adds to the mystery. In these early days, sometimes you're not quite sure what they were trying to get across with the game. How about I head back over to where that cave was? Um, I can always put it on warp speed if I want, but I do have a couple more things to say. Um, yeah, in the instructions, I noticed some interesting phrasing. Um, like I said before, it, it seemed to have some pretensions about it. Um, they describe the software that you've purchased as, um, I'll just quote it, this program is not a video game. Uh, and they say it's also not a text adventure. It's software that combines artistic beauty with intense intellectual challenge. So for the era, um, I do kind of see the artistic beauty they're getting at. Um, the, where the intellectual challenge comes into it is that once you find the particular thing you're looking for, which is a rune, an ancient rune on the seabed, you can, you can sort of see it represented in uh, one of the box arts for the game. You find, a, you find this rune and then using um, the instruction manual that comes with the game, you're supposed to decode it in some way. I don't really know anything about that because um, I don't have the manual in front of me, but um, yeah, it was supposed to be some kind of puzzle uh, system that transcends the game and the real world. And I mean, that was common at the time when games were this primitive to have uh, external additions uh, like the manual to supplement um, what's happening in the game. Yeah, I don't really know what to do at this point. Um, I may have found the thing I'm looking for, but possibly not. There's supposed to be more um, caves and stuff. There's a tuna net that you're supposed to try and avoid getting caught in. Let me go back up and I'll try and find this color current thing that I read about. You're supposed to be able to reach a section of the sea where the water's a different color and then you follow that along. So I don't know if that's what I've found down there or not. Um, yeah. So I mentioned the pearl earlier. That the alternate title for this game is the Dolphin's Pearl. Um, I read on, I think it was Wikipedia, that part of the promotion for the game was that if you manage to decode all these runes that are in there and... Um, uh, no, I guess you don't send off for it. I guess the code is supposed to reveal to you coordinates to a real-life location on Earth where there was a pearl, an actual pearl, hidden somewhere. Um, this is what was told me by Wikipedia. I don't really know if anyone ever found it. Um, the alternate box art, or one of the box arts anyway, has a, like a, not a sticker, but a, mm, uh, like a, a thing, a violator. Um, it's got a, a, a watermark or something. No, what do you call it? Anyway, there's there's a message on the box art saying that through playing this game, you had the chance to win a holiday in Hawaii. <laughs> so there's two possible prizes for playing this game. I don't really know the mechanics of that, but um, yeah. I, I, it was back in that, that era again. Um, it seems like something that would have happened back then. It just it was just strange to me, offering people a chance to win a, a trip to Hawaii um, based on if they can solve the game. But I'm not doing very good at solving it. Uh -huh, maybe this is the color current. I didn't think about that, but I think it might be it. Let's give it a go. I'll try and follow it. Too busy talking, I'm not paying enough attention to what's going on. So we'll follow it, and that's the end of it. Great. I like the variety of wildlife in the background, the different fish and rays and turtles and stuff. I think that fish just damaged me. Alright, I'm going to go into warp speed now. We've gone back up to 850%. Um, you can see me getting damaged when I flash like that. Yeah, so I don't think that is the way to go. Uh, see, it's it's amazing how much um, ground you can cover in fast forward mode. So back on the color current, we're going to try and follow it a little bit. No, it's quite short. Maybe it disappears if you're not following it well enough. Hmm, odd. 
Okay, I'll go back to the start of it and oh, where'd it go? Hmm. Maybe it's a rough guide. I just follow the last vector of it. See, it is it is a mysterious game. It's it's poetic. Um, it's a vast and open world, mysteries of the ocean, all this stuff, and uh, a lot of those aspects of this game do remind me of Echo. So, yeah, in certain ways, this is uh, prototypical of that uh, of that game. So I'm pleased to have played it, but I don't feel like I'm getting very far, and... Oops, what happened? I've stopped moving. Something's gone wrong. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, we might have to leave it there. <laughs> but yeah, not a bad game. Pretty interesting. Um, And an interesting uh, backstory and surrounding campaign around the game. Um, yeah. Let's quit out of that now. So that was the Dolphin's Pearl, aka the Dolphin's Room. Now, and the next thing, whoops, <laughs> that's for later. The next, oh, that's way too loud. Sorry about that. My different programs have different levels of volume, obviously. Okay. So when looking for um, games set underwater like this, there's a few different genres that come up um, that aren't quite what I'm after. There's a lot of match three games that <laughs> have an underwater theme. Um, as I said before, I'm also skipping over anything to do with divers or submarines, um, which includes games like Endless Ocean on the Wii or Abzu, which was recently released. Um, this is another genre. Oops. Yeah, it's doing that. Okay, I know, I know what's going on. Yeah, all right. So this is another genre that's quite, quite common, common-ish, um, called fish survival genre. Uh, in games like this, you are a fish and you have to eat smaller fish and avoid larger fish to survive. Now this doesn't really have anything to do with dolphins so I'm only going to play it real briefly on stream but um, I also thought it had a funny name so I wanted to show that. It is obviously you saw on the title screen it's called Fish Dude. <laughs> that's that's the localized version anyway. Um, the I, the I think the Japanese one, uh, no, I forget what it was called, but it is a Japanese developed game made by a company called Toa Chiki, <laughs> which is a silly name. The only other thing I saw on their softography that I'd recognized was A Week of Garfield, which is known to be a notoriously bad game. So you have to eat a certain number of fish to grow. Um, I didn't quite get that. But yeah, this is a common genre. Um, oh, I forgot to do this. Yeah, colors, Game Boy, Super Game Boy. I think I like this one. The inverted colors one is pretty good, but I think my favorite is the red and blue. Um, anyway, yep. I think I've said everything I want to say about this. So, <laughs> yeah, Mitch. When they do, when they, when Nintendo makes a Game Boy Classic, this needs to be on it. It's very deep. I don't know what that is supposed to be. A seagull? It looks really weird. It looks like a stick insect or something. Pretty bizarre. Okay, so that's fish, dude. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, obviously, the prototypical dolphin game that anyone thinks of 
is Echo the Dolphin. And that's what I... That's what got me enamored with the whole concept early this year. Um, so we'll give that a quick run. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame that a game called A Week of Garfield t turned out to be bad, because Garfield's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, the point of this stream is to give a broad range of different games. Um, I have played Echo all the way through, not on stream, but on my own time. And it's pretty well known, so if you want to see a lot of this game, there are plenty of places to do so. Um, I was thinking of including some links to Let's Plays in the YouTube description of the archive of this video. Um, so I'm not going to play too much of Echo, but it really is one of... I mean, it's, it's, it's just... it's great. <laughs> I can't talk about it. It's, it's a really nice game. It, plays smoothly, it looks beautiful, um, the music's wonderful, um, it's it's really strange and mysterious, the things that happen to Echo over the course of the game. Um, just It really wins in terms of mood and atmosphere, I think. Um, and yeah, just playing around as a dolphin like this is really fun, and you get to interact with the world in different ways, mostly through using a sonar. You do have a map function, like this, um, and you can also talk to other singers. They say, Echo, if we breathe air, why do we live beneath the waves? Um, so let's start the game properly. You jump into the air and all the sea life gets abducted by this tornado. And as you progress through the game, you start to unravel the mystery of why that happened and who can help you in this situation. Um, and you meet old, wise creatures of the sea and other mysterious organisms that you don't understand. And Echo gets strange powers as he goes on and goes on a groovy, radical journey, man. Yeah. So, yeah, really great game. Um, give it a go or at least watch the Let's Play. Um, that I'm going to link. Um, it's just from World of Long Plays. I, I figured that was a good enough resource. Um, there are two main versions of this game, the Mega Drive release and the Sega CD release. The CD one's um, got extra content, um, but it's also got a re-orchestrated soundtrack, and whether you, which soundtrack you prefer is really up to you, but um, the extra content in the CD release and Somewhat adjusted difficulty makes it better in my opinion, but yeah, so that's Echo. I want to show you another Echo related game here real quick. When I say Echo related, um... Do, 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 do. There we go. This is... Oh yeah, Dolphin Noises, I forgot about that. This is, um... The game, also called Echo the Dolphin, but for the Master System, also released on Game Gear, but the Master System has a bigger field of view on the screen, so it's much, much to be preferred in this case. Uh, it's a decent replication of the Echo game onto an 8-bit system, but it loses out a lot in terms of the atmosphere. Um, and it couldn't quite get all the set pieces of the main game, so some um, gameplay segments are replaced by pushing block puzzles, <laughs> which aren't in the 16-bit version. Um, but it's it's a nice little game. Um, the chip tunes have a different feel again to the music from the 16-bit version, but they're also nice in their own right, and the graphics are also very cute. Um, a problem with the Game Gear and the Master System is that they're two-button systems, unlike the Mega Drive, which is a three-button system. So Echo actually has three functions. Swim faster, uh, sonar, and the bash attack thing. And they had to map the bash to pushing both at once. 
so it can be a little awkward sometimes. Um, but it's still Echo the Dolphin, and it's pretty impressive that they did that on a much less powerful system. So yeah. <laughs> Given, um, apparently I made him feel bad because he, he's been trying to play Echo as um, I nominated it for our Retro Game Club. Um, but he, he's found that he's quite bad at the game, in his words. Um, but he's saying I made it look too easy. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, I've played um, all the Echo games now, so my skills have probably improved in them, I guess. So, yeah. My advice is practice. <laughs> oh, um, Wolf's editing my part of the podcast. I sent in a, um, a written letter for him to read out about a scary experience that I had in the game. So that's cool. Much obliged, Wolf. All right, um, back to the Mega Drive. We're gonna look at Echo 2. I didn't mention just now that um, Echo came out in 1992. Um, so that's, what, seven years after Dolphin's Pearl? Let me change over, okay. Yeah, that's the 8-bit version. That was the Sega Master System. Um, that game got a worldwide release, more or less, so definitely check that out over the Game Gear version. So here's the sequel from 1994. It's quite good as well. Um, I didn't notice until comparing them really, but having a look at Echo's sprite here, it's a lot more detailed. Um, that's the first thing you notice, basically. Um, so. It's a very similar gameplay system. Um, Echo has a new ability to, uh, let me see if I can show you this. If you land on an island, you can like flop around, which he couldn't do before, very helpful. <laughs> um, you can still use the sonar to talk to people. Uh, I say people. Um, of course, some countries have labeled uh, dolphins and other stations as non-human persons, but I'll get to that later. The map, sc the map screen you can access is bigger, which is nice. Um, when I played the Echo of the Tides of Time, I was disappointed that they hadn't turned down the difficulty at all. It's, it's known that both games are very hard, but I guess it's part of its character, so I can forgive that. Um, it's just as strange and mysterious in its plot as the first game. Um, but yeah, um, I guess it's a little less cohesive. There's still strange things that happen to Echo, um, time travel and so on, um, but it's a little less clear about what's going on sometimes. That's what I felt when I played it. Um, but it's by no means a worse game. It's still pretty amazing. Um, um, what did I want to say about it? Yeah, the ending's really strange as well. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll, I'll link a long play of this as well in case you want to um, check it out yourself. Sea is filled with teleport rings. Oh, that's right. Um, this is actually something I didn't like so much about this sequel. When you're going between areas, you don't just sort of pop out and pop in. Um, there was one 2D section where you're swimming al along a, lo a long, wide open stretch of ocean, avoiding sharks in the first echo. Um, but that kind of thing has been replaced in this game by these 3D scenes. But I didn't really like them, I think. They're kind of lame. Um, but yeah, they were trying to advance the formula and do different things with Echo, so yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, fantastic game. Um, let's show you a different thing. <laughs> so here we go. Um, what's next? Back on to this. Change this. Okay, so this is the 8-bit version of Echo 2. 
Um, just as the first game had an 8-bit version, so does this one. So yeah, uh, going left gets you to the password screen. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, stop, stop. Fim. Yes, I'm fimmed. Okay. Now, you might know a bit about Sega and their um, business in Brazil, um, but thanks to a local subsidiary um, or uh, partner, contractor, whatever, um, Sega has Sega and their old consoles, especially, have remained um, prominent and popular in specifically in Brazil uh, to this day. Um, so because of that, uh, even at the time, um, a lot of games came out there uh, for the Master System that wouldn't have otherwise. So the Game Gear was around longer in, say, the US. Um, so games that were coming out of Game Gear sometimes would be ported to the Master System, but only in Brazil. And Echo 2 is one of those. So you can play this game on Game Gear, but I would recommend definitely playing it on um, Master System instead. Although the downside is, as you can see, all the text is in Portuguese, so you might not understand it, but um, it's a much better way to play because of, like I said before, that expanded game screen. Um, another weird thing I noticed just this morning when setting this up was that some buttons have been flipped around. Uh, button 2 is now the, uh, the headbutt dash move thingy attack, and to sonar you press both at once, whereas that particular combination was flipped around for Echo 1. 8-bit. Um, I will say also about this port, um, compared to Echo 1 on 8-bit, um, more things have been lost because there were more set pieces and things um, for Echo 2 that didn't make it. Uh, again, we have block pushing puzzles back, um, things getting swapped around a bit. Um, but yeah, all the same things I said for the first one apply. Uh, with the one caveat that it's in Portuguese. Um, so yeah, let's do an, a little bit more Echo before we start talking about some Echo inspirations. Not inspirations, but um, stuff. Stuff, yeah, stuff. So this is Echo Junior. I've actually played it on stream before. So I'll, I will link <laughs> my archive of the time I streamed that. Um, I'm still not 100% sure if I actually played all the levels, but I played most of them, I'm sure of that. So it's definitely made for younger kids. It's got a much easier difficulty um, level. Uh, and yeah, there's three playable characters, which is nice. You, you get your Echo, you get your um, Kidney, the... Um, Pacific Spotted Dolphin, and you get your Tara, the Orca. Um, so there's no dash move now, you have two sonar moves and sonar buttons instead. Um, and the sonar helps you locate the items you're looking for. Each level um, has different things to do. Sometimes it's a, like a treasure hunt, you have to find certain things in the level. Nothing hurts you, you don't have health and you can't die, so it's quite a friendly game. Um, and it's got the same feeling of uh, freedom, free movement, exploration, playfulness um, that all the record games had without the crushing difficulty, but also without the sort of weird um, trippy plot stuff that they got to. So yeah, you know, there's, there's some trade-offs I guess. Um, I think it's nice that they had different playable characters. Um, they all seem to play pretty much the same. Um, Tara is female, so not that it's really obvious from the character, but uh, that helps, I guess. Um, yeah, I've, I've been um, moving so quickly with these games that I was going to read out some dolphin facts for you from the Echo manual, but we haven't really had a chance, have we? That's okay. Um, one thing to mention about this game is that it has a mode. I don't remember how to get to it, but 
it's got a, a dolphin fax mode integrated into the game itself there's like a parent mode if you put in some button combination or something you get to an area where um, parents can set up options for their kids when they play so it's like a parental controls thing I guess but a bit more you know simplistic um, but it also has a dolphin fact section integrated in the game itself I don't remember how to get to it but it's not really important um, hello G-man oh yes Mitch left so goodbye and G-man's here so hello um, good to see you. This is Echo Jr. for the Mega Drive. Um, oh, I guess I would show off the other Echo Jr. game, but can't really play it. I tried and it wouldn't load up in the emulator. Um, there's a second Echo Jr. game. It's called Echo Jr. and the Great Ocean Treasure Hunt. Um, it was released on the Sega Pico, a console specifically for young children and for educational games and so on. Um, it's even more simplistic than this. Um, the Pico uses a, a stylus um, in a very early example of such a thing. Um, how do I... Okay, just sing to the thing when you find it. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I, I'll link a Let's Play of that I found as well. It's the Korean version, but apart from the title screen, there's no difference. Um, between any other version of the game so yeah that has uh, simple challenges like um, counting and addition um, pattern matching um, quite simple stuff um, but it's it's fun for kids you know <laughs> And it's nice to have an Echo related game that's not really difficult. <laughs> uh, I forgot what exactly I'm supposed to do. But yeah, you see these glyphs from the other Echo games. I guess you just smash all the yellow ones. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> All right, um, so that's Echo. That's sort of the Echo original Echo trilogy. Even though each of the each of the trilogy has a companion game, either on the Master System or on the Sega Pico. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess we'll. I did mention that was from 1995. Um, on that note, we're going to jump back a little bit in time because I want to show a game that I also played on stream earlier from 1994, so we're going that far back. It's called Sequest DSV, based on the, um, uh, I guess, ill-fated uh, sci-fi TV show. Um, I found it incredibly difficult and unbalanced, but it's uh, a decent little game. With It's ambitious, I'll, I'll say that, definitely ambitious. Um, but yeah, you can you can play as a dolphin. Um, this is Darwin. He's optionally used in um, various missions, depending on the specific challenges that you have to uh, solve in each mission. There are, and they're all different. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty varied in that way. Um, but in this mission specifically, it's designed for Darwin and Darwin only. Um, in, in the Sequest series, he's, Darwin is recognized as a member of the team and they're able to communicate him, with him through a translator. Um, <clears throat> and he wears an aqualung to give him an unlimited air supply while swimming. And yeah, he helps out when they need to slip into tight spaces or so on. Um, yeah, so in this one, we're defusing a bomb in a coral reef if we can navigate it in time while avoiding these mines. Um, it's all about bioterrorists and pirates and stuff who, or eco-terrorists, uh, who we have to stop from interfering with research uh, projects, etc. Um, yeah, so it, it was a very rushed game and came out very flawed as a result, but um, pretty interesting. And it 
exemplifies this sci-fi trope that I've seen a few times over where in the future we recognize how smart cetaceans, dolphins and whales really are and they become integrated members of society in some way. I've seen a book series where a dolphin state joins the UN and um, you get things like Johnny Mnemonic where the dolphin it communicates through cyberspace. Um, uh, but yeah, dolphins and whales, they are smart. They've got a high brain to body mass ratio, um, which is an indicator of intelligence. Um, they have complex social interactions. They can communicate. Um, they obviously have very different lifestyles and behaviors to us. So sometimes we struggle to understand them. Um, and they are still animals. So they do have behaviors that um, we can find strange or uh, at odds with the thought that they have hu almost human level intelligence. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting subject worth uh, reading up on. Um, yeah, cause, you know, I've heard people saying dolphins are like jerks who kill for no reason or um, perform acts of forced mating, etc. Um, some of those behaviors are seen in the animal kingdom. Oh, I failed. The bomb blew up and the, and the reef was destroyed. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to show off the dolphin level of Sequest. I have streamed this before, so we won't dwell on it too long. Um, I thought it, it made sense for the dolphin showcase. And yes, G-Man, we do need more dolphin games. And that's why I'm doing this stream. Um, I did move back in time a little bit for that one. So I'll go back a little bit again because very quickly I want to show off a game that was reminiscent of Echo. Although it came out at about exactly the same time and it's Ariel the Little Mermaid. Again, I have streamed this myself uh, previously so I will be very quick about it. But um, it's got the same feel of Echo where you're um, a native of an undersea environment, exploring that environment, um, you know, exploratory gameplay uh, and interaction with um, different creatures in the environment. Yeah. Again, I have streamed this already, so I'm going to be real quick about this, but... Yeah. Just as a point of comparison to other games I've played today. And it doesn't actually involve dolphins. <laughs> it's just sort of dolphin adjacent. I don't think there's any dolphins in the game. Now, how did I do that thing? There's your map. There's a thing where you can do... Eh, whatever. Anyway, you have little ocean friends as well. Um, Sebastian can help you and um, flounder and that digger fish thing. So this was released on the master system as well. I won't bother loading that up. Um, I did load it up right at the end of my other stream, but found um, and I actually found that I thought it was um, initially I thought it was a lot more similar to this, but um, I realized that the level design was a bit different, so that was interesting. But anyway, that was a digression back back in time to 1992. Um, um, da -da -da. Yeah, that's right. Um, given saying octopi and, octopi and squid are also very intelligent. Um, there is There are lots of intelligence to life we should probably stop messing with. I, I agree. Um, I'll get into it later, but um, it is very unethical to um, kill, eat, uh, capture um, animals with such high intelligence, I think. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he's saying dolphins puff puff pass, they can't be all bad. What does that mean exactly? Um, I know they're intelligent enough to use tools, but then so are like crows. Um, 
Mm, now, before I distract myself too much, what is the next game I'm playing? Aha! Okay, the next game I'm playing is also kind of a digression, but um, there is a playable dolphin in it, so I have to at least give it a look in. Okay. It's on the PlayStation, and it might not be what you expect. Yeah, apparently um, mother dolphins teach their daughters how to put a sponge on their nose and um, use that to forage for food uh, while protecting their protecting themselves from, you know, hazards. And also river dolphins have been observed. Uh, what did I read about that? They, they did something. They've used tools in some way. I don't remember how exactly. But yeah. Certain species of river dolphin have become extinct recently, which is kind of sad. But yeah, there are little things. They've got a long, thin snout. Um, I've started a new game. It's called Sonic Wings Special. It's a shoot 'em up, <laughs> and you can pick from different people from different parts of the world. Uh, but the one we're here for is Whitey. Um, that's his uh, Japanese name. In earlier games in the series um, that were localized in the US, he was known as Spanky, Spanky the Dolphin. Uh, so Sonic Wings Special is a sort of remix of the first three games, Sonic Wings... Uh, okay, so when it was localized it was called um, Aero Fighters, I think. I think it was Aero Fighters? Um, but yeah, this one wasn't released in America initially, or at all, I think. Um, no, 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 it has been released now, that's right. So with this one, um, it was uh, on the arcade and on the PlayStation. Uh, the PlayStation version got a release in Europe as well as Japan, and that's the version I'm playing now. They didn't localize the name of Whitey to the American Spanky, they kept it the same, and the name of the game itself but they also translate it into English. Um, yeah, so this PlayStation port, or I actually think this might have come first before the arcade one, I'm not really sure. Oops, yep, that was done. Um, it was released on PSN for, I think, the PS3 only. Um, and I believe that release is worldwide, so uh, anyone can buy and play this game. Uh, but it's not completely within the purview of the stream today, except that um, you do play as a dolphin. This is um, in the similar vein of those kind of sci-fi concepts I was talking about earlier, where dolphins have been recognized to have intelligence. Whitey uh, has just as much of a valid existence as any of the human characters in this game, and he's apparently learned to fly a fighter jet. <laughs> um, his special weapons are usually water themed. He has a, um, a bomb thing as well, but I guess kind of reminiscent of nautical mines maybe. Um, in other games apparently uh, he has a sort of wave of water that comes out. Um, yeah, uh, really I found out about this game because of a screenshot that someone posted at some point, probably uh, Snorkel at Open. Um, because when you beat the game as a character, you get a little cutscene or whatever. And Whitey has some choice uh, quotes and comments. He's a, he's a funny little dolphin, I think. Um, so yeah, pretty cool game. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I see. The thing Given was talking about is that um, dolphins have been observed uh, in a behavior that is potentially uh, in, uh, interpreted as recreational drug use, they'll bite on a puffer fish and the toxins inside will affect their brain and they'll um, pass it along in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I did read about that. Um, the researchers, I'm not sure whether that's just um, like whether they're intentionally like taking a hit in that way, or if they're um, just doing strange play behaviors. I don't know. Whitey, hello. Okay, so that's Cycling Special. Um, we'll move on quickly from that. That was released in 1996, by the way. 
but now we're going to stay on the PlayStation, stay in 1996, and still in Japan, actually. A little game called, skipping through the boot up sequence, of course. Fast forward, fast forward. So this game is called, look, they're not gonna tell you. It's called um, Fluid, uh, also known as Depth in Japan. Um, about, oh, tell me about Fluid by Zen. Well, this is like some demo scene stuff. Okay, so that's credits. Um, we don't specifically need that, but a little help might be useful. In silent space, swim to the first available pattern. Is that it? Yeah. I think we might be having little minor emulation issues, which I noticed with Incredible Crisis as well on this particular emulator. Hopefully that doesn't affect the game too much. All right, so yeah, in Fluid you're a dolphin and you swim through a strange kind of ocean and there's various sort of mini games related to rhythm gameplay. So this this particular symbol is a different color to the others, so we'll swim up to it. See what happens. Cool. We get warped. <clears throat> Not sure what the controls. Right, I can use L2 and R2 to... Does that change the volume or the pitch or something? I don't know, you're supposed to do something, but I don't really understand what. But the, the, the music is supposed to be affected by the gameplay in some way, I believe. Um, Please let me know if this is loud enough for you because although I'm not sure what I can do to make it louder, the music is important to this game, apparently. Mm. Okay, I can leave. We've got new patterns from Peace. Alright, so I think the point of that little zone was Peace, just to just to yeah swim along in a nice environment and have some ambient music and yeah you acquire different sound elements by um, playing the different games apparently hmm. um. That's right, I think to unlock the next one, you have to like enter, exit, and then enter again, and then you play until something happens. I think that's what I read. It's a little confusing, but um, yeah, here we are, it's a dolphin. Um, dolphins evolved from ungulates, which are hoofed mammals. Their closest living relative is the hippopotamus. Um, but yeah, long ago, these animals entered the sea and um, as they learned to live there, their hind legs became smaller and smaller. Um, a lot of whales and cetacean species now have a very tiny vestigial pelvis and hind legs uh, inside their body at the base of their ribcage. Um, but it doesn't do anything at all. They, they get around with their front flippers, which are evolved from forelimbs, and a, their tail, which is um, adapted to moving this up and down motion to propel them. Um, the music is quiet. Um, let me see if I can do something about that. Mm, not really. The only thing I can do is turn myself down and you turn up your own volume. So I'll turn myself down a little bit. Um, you turn yourself up and hopefully that helps. But the music is fairly quiet in this uh, part of the game anyway. You know, I was kind of expecting something to happen by now. 
we don't need to adjust this. I don't know, man. Let's go see if any of the other patterns are available. <clears throat> Here's that one. Ah, you know, I'd assume they'd unlock in a circle. Starting from where we start. Mm. Mm, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to load this up in a different emulator like I did with Incredible Crisis. Not on stream, but at another time. Mm. Ah, something's wrong there. Let me try this. Okay, that worked. So I'll swap this over. <laughs> Excuse the frame there. Should have checked this out more thoroughly before starting. Um, anyway. You know, I think it's a little louder in this emulator, so that's a good thing. Those little artifacts around the fish are still the same, so I guess that wasn't a problem of the particular emulation. But a more common problem, oh well. It's definitely a different colour to this water. Okay, so we've got new patterns from Peace. And according to the guide I read, you get that message and then, you know what, let me just check it. Do, do. Play piece, exit, play piece again, then change when prompted, is what it says. So we'll play it until we're prompted, we'll just go along. And yeah, see what happens. It is a peaceful calming experience, so. Let's have, a, let's have a little dolphin fact while we're here. From the Echo of the Dolphin Manual. The scientific name of, the scientific name of bottlenose dolphins is Terciops truncatus, meaning cut off face. Bottlenoses belong to the superfamily Delphinoidea, named after a legend in which the god Apollo rose from the sea in dolphin form. The ancients commemorated this event in the constellation Delphinus, a group of five stars in the shape of a dolphin that can still be seen in the northern skies. Um, you might have noticed if you look at any Echo the Dolphin media that um, Echo has a pattern of dots on his forehead. That is correspond that does correspond to the constellation Delphinus and is indicative of um, Echo's mysterious destiny um, and his yeah his powers and so on. Um, yeah, it was interesting reading about dolphins in mythology. Um, they do play a big part, apparently, in Greek myths and legends. I um, also found references to um, to river dolphins in um, Hindu uh, folk tales. Uh, they also apparently figure into, I guess, when medieval uh, Europe, I guess, discovered them, however they did. Um, they weren't that familiar with them. They thought they were a kind of fish 
They were sometimes depicted in medieval artwork with scales, um, but they became a they became used in um, medieval heraldry. So on certain coats of arms, you might see a dolphin. Um, I guess the most prominent example of that is the Dauphin, which is the title given to uh, the heir to the throne in France back when they had a monarchy. Um, and their symbol is a dolphin. And the name Dauphin means dolphin in French, and that's, that's what they called them. Well, I haven't been prompted, so... Do, 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 do. I don't know what the buttons do. I think the buttons are adding instruments to this track. See, when I hold down circle, you can hear a string start up. And triangle makes a high-pitched uh, fluting noise. Square, can't tell, maybe a deep string sound, possibly. But yeah, you're supposed to be able to interact with that. And <laughs> it's a shame that I haven't tried that until now. Um, just been kind of ignoring the gameplay. <laughs> Danger Mass is learning a lot from my do dolphin facts. Connection to the French royalty. Yep, that fact plucked for you from Wikipedia. <laughs> Um, there's so much more to this game that I've seen in screenshots, but I really can't discover how exactly to access it. And since this game is meant, this uh, stream is meant to be a, you know, fast paced swapping around showcase, I might have to leave it here with Fluid until I figure out more about how to make it work. Maybe I'll revisit it in a later stream and try and play the entire game. Um, uh, assuming also that I learn how to boost the volume better, so that, that comes through more. Yeah, um, from what I've read, it's it's pretty promising. Um, it's a kind of interesting uh, rhythm action thing in some way, but I really don't get how that works exactly from what I've seen of the game so far. But we do have to move on, so let's see what's next on the docket. Ah. Okay, so quit that. I'm gonna flip over to Windows, which I'm gonna run through Wine. So this is another tangential related game. Um, if I find the right folder that I put in it. Okay. Yes, play. It already there we go we catch on by pixel so pixel is um, oh yes that's right I don't need my controller it's all done with simple controls on the keyboard yes we'll start new game so this is um <laughs> I guess pixels self portrait here um, telling us the instructions um Ikachan is a game that Daisuke Amaya also known as pixel made before his famous Cave Story game. It was released in 2000 for the PC. Um, Nicholas picked it up more recently for a release on the 3DS, but only in North America, The Jerks. Um, it's a nice little game where you place a squid and you sort of explore this ocean environment and you interact with other creatures. So spiritually, it's got some uh, echo-like vibes, even if it's a bit more cartoony with it. Um, but yeah, I really liked it when I played it um, quite a few years ago now. And when I discovered Echo and I was thinking about what other games that are like it, this is one of the few that sprung to mind. Um, we do have to avoid other animals for now and those spikes. But if we get enough fish to eat, will level up and I believe that what does that do? Did I increase my health? Maybe. Oh, I guess those fish don't hurt me. <laughs> um yeah. Like all the Pixels games, it's got great pixel art, it's got um 
some beautiful little chip tunes that he composed for it. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if this is a fan translation or... Because, you know, he made all the games in Japanese, obviously. Um, so yeah, there's a guy called Ironhead. He makes you carry up. Earthquakes. I don't have a pearl. Yes, I am looking for one. It's kind of a vaguely Metroidvania structure to this game, I suppose you could say, if you want to... Yeah, describe it like that. Um, there's one meaningful power up in this game where you get a little cap to put on your head. There we go, the spike hat. Also known as the dunce hat. Which then makes you look like a proper squid with this um, arrow shaped head thing going on. And with that, we can break blocks like that, and we can also attack enemies. See, it hurt me because it was puffed up like that, but I also damaged it and destroyed it. And that gives me experience just as fish do. So this is Iron Head, I think. It's a bit, a bit like him. I feel like his head should be more iron. Um, the character Iron Head does make an appearance in Cave Story, and along with some squids and such, in a reference to this game. Um, <laughs> it's like when Jill went underwater, says James Moss. Yes, this game is called Ika-chan. I-K-A-chan. C-H-A-N. Uh, also the name of the main character, who I believe is male. Um, oh yeah, I guess Ika means squid, so yeah, it's like squid-chan. Um, very cute game. Um, it's fairly short, so it won't take you too long to play if you're interested. Um, yeah. And if you're into Cave Story, um, yeah, it's got that connection as well. So it's nice. So we'll talk to you. Hello, who are you? Kachan, that's a funny name. There you go if you wanted to know how to spell it. Um, yeah, and Gibbon, since he's American, he can actually get this on his 3DS. I can't. Um, so this is Pinky. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, all that stuff. Okay, so yeah, that, that was fun. Let's move on. I won't play the whole game. It's not a dolphin game anyway, but it is um, in the same vein. What's next? Ah, uh, yes. Next would be... Um, Oh, I didn't mention with Fluid, actually. There's some pretty fun little tidbits about it. Um, the composer, the sound programmer, um, along with working on another beat, another sort of rhythm game, he also designed Flashman in Rockman 2. Weird trivia. Anyway. I want to mention this one. Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. So... Nova Trade was a Hungarian company who uh, Ed Annunziata of Sega worked with to develop the three Echo games. Um, later on, they were bought by some other company, um, Acclaim, I believe, probably, from the box. Um, changed their name to Appaloosa Interactive, and Sega contracted them to make an Echo reboot. Ed Annunziata was not involved with this project, um, and... It's viewed as sort of off to the side of main Echo games, but it's pretty interesting, um, I guess. I don't know too much about it. I tried to play it a few times, but I could never get a PS2 or Dreamcast emulator working properly. So outside of buying a PS2 or, uh, I don't know, it's, it's complicated, but um, <laughs> yeah, I basically can't play this game, but I did find two Let's Plays online, which I'll link. Um, they're, they're pretty long in, in many different parts, um, but it's a 3D game unlike most of the ones I've played so far, um, except for Fluid. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's sort of a new Echo game, even though it doesn't have anything to do with the previous ones. Um, 
it, it's just a dream of mine. One day I'll play it, maybe, <laughs> if I can find a way, but um, yeah, maybe I'll just watch through the Let's Plays. Um, so yeah, that, that's um, also released in the year 2000, which is why I bring it up now. I'll have to catch on. Okay, next thing would be back to the Game Boy, because we've got another Dolphin game. Where'd it go? Dang it. There we go. I've just finished uh, submitting a... Da, 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 an entry into the Moby Games database on this game and putting in the credits and, and information about it because it wasn't in their database at all, strangely enough. Um, I have played this on stream before. It's called Flipper and Lopaka, based on an Australian animated series. Um, like Echo, it's got these themes of an underwater civilization. In this case, it's called Quetzo, not uh, Atlantis. Atlantis often comes up a lot in these kinds of games. And so you, might expect. Um, but yeah, it's about this this series and um, this game is about the friendship between a boy who's like a native of the Pacific Island. Um, his name is Lapaka. And Flipper, the dolphin, um, is, yeah, his friend. And Flipper teaches him the secrets of the ocean, which let him breathe underwater, or not not breathe underwater, but hold his breath for a long time, and communicate with fish and uh, sea creatures. And he sort of gets semi-integrated into the culture of this undersea um, city, Quetzo, which is now ruled by fish and sea life. Um, yeah, so every second level you play these platform stages, and then the other ones you play as uh, Flipper. And Flipper stages are uh, pretty much like Echo the Dolphin, I'm very obviously inspired by it, I think. Um, this game came out in 2001, made by a French team called Planet Interact Development. Um, I didn't have time to set up a state where you could see a flipper level, but I had this save state from the very end of the game that I did during my other stream. I'll link, I'll link to the stream I did where I, I played the entirety of this game in two parts. Um, this is Dexter, the, the bad guy, he's an octopus, yeah, etc. But yeah, it's not quite a smooth controlling ass echo, but um, it's quite good, I think, for, for an echo clone. Um, I didn't enjoy Lord Parker's levels as much, but they're not bad. Um, yeah, so Flipper. Is he related to previous Flippers we have known? Who knows? Flipper as a franchise has been going a lot on a long time, since the 60s I believe. Um, of course you might know the live action TV series where Flipper, um, the dolphin, you know, friends with some kids or something, I don't know. It was kind of like Lassie but with a dolphin, or Skippy, the bush kangaroo. Um, oh yes, Tony's here. Hello Tony, good to see you. Um, He's been watching the Animal Crossing Nintendo Direct about the new mobile game. I don't know anything about it because I've been streaming, so I'll look it up after. Um, mm, too busy with this stuff right now to check it out or anything. Um, yeah, Flipper. Um, I think I don't know. I don't know whether Flipper is what helped make dolphins uh, more prominent in popular culture, or if it's a symptom of them being popular otherwise. But um, yeah, at some point people started realizing that dolphins were smart and interesting creatures, uh, almost human level intelligence supposedly. Um, and yeah, I think popular culture reflected that. Um, so yeah, people have been fascinated with dolphins for a long time. Um, it's not just me, anyway. That's Flipper and Parker. I already streamed the whole thing, so you can check that out. I'll link that later. Um, the next thing I would be talking about is a 2003 game called dun, 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 Dolphin Blue. So this is a game for arcades, um, Japan only. Um, it was made by Sammy before they merged with Sega to form Sega Sammy. Uh, yes, I will talk about the Tamagotchi later. Um, hopefully you can provide me with some resources about that because it sounded pretty interesting. I'll talk about that later. 
Um, yeah, Sega, Sammy. Sammy um, made a lot of pachinko games and stuff, uh, and they made this. Um, you know, they made other stuff too, but um, especially this, just before they merged with Sega. Um, so it's for this Atomis Wave arcade system, whatever that is. Um, it's like a shoot 'em up. I saw a really good let's play of it, so I'll link you to that as well. It's um, someone clearing the whole thing in one, using only one continue, one CC clear, they call it. Um, uh, yeah, it's from a Japanese site, but um, the game doesn't really. Uh, I guess it's got a text intro, but that's actually in English. <laughs> anyway. The game only released in Japan, but it's it's like a Metal Slug style run and gun kind of thing. But you do have a dolphin companion who accompanies you, uh, either a blue one or a pink one, depending on which character you choose to play as. Um, does the game have a two-player mode? I hope so. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, um, some stages you ride on the dolphin, you're standing on it, and it's like swimming along in the ocean. Some stages you're swimming under the surface, and the dolphin is sort of following along behind you and you have a special attack button where it will um, shoot off and hit a bunch of people and spin around and stuff. Um, it's pretty cool but you don't technically play as a dolphin <laughs> so uh, it's it's one of those uh, off to the side games from the main point of the stream. Um, but yeah it has lovely sprite animation, 2D sprite art on top of some delightful early 3D uh, backgrounds and stuff. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. But let's move on. So next is something on the Nintendo DS, although it's also on the GBA and GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. It's one of them big cross-platform releases. Where the heck is it? Here. Okay. Reboot. <clears throat> stop, stop, stop. Okay, here we are. Is that working? What's wrong? Ah, I see. There we go. Alright, Shamu's Deep Sea Adventures, presented by SeaWorld. Um, there's as I said, it came out on the main consoles of the time, the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox, and that version was developed by a Romanian studio called Sand Green Studios, who are mostly known for making hunting games. The GBA and DS versions were handled by a company called Humagade. You saw their logo there on the title screen. They're a Canadian company who's basically done nothing else notable apart from this. And this is only notable because it reminds me of Echo, basically. That's right, so on DS we have stylus controls. It's going to be pretty difficult to play this, and I intend to possibly pick this up for cheap and play it myself. Um, we'll see. So we start with Shamu uh, in the middle of a show at SeaWorld. Hang on a sec, let me... Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do a double jump in the air. Um, <laughs> basically, this is really hard to do on a computer. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to show off how these controls are kind of interesting and that you can hold down on the stylus and then move it around to uh, change your direction and then you've got different moves you can do with the face buttons. I just did a belly flop, there's a double jump, um, there's a head bash, um, but we're going to switch over to the Game Boy Advance version to give it a bit more time. Um, after you pass that initial show section, um, um, hmm. now you know what, I'm going to try if I can to get through this section. <laughs> okay, so he wants me to blow up a balloon by blowing at the touch screen. <laughs> Hang on. There's, there's, a, there's a thing for that. Um, they have an integrated microphone support into this emulator, but there's a button you can press 
to simulate it. So if I find that balloon, I can blow into it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, pressing down the button. <sighs> okay, done. <laughs> okay, um, so now we're gonna pick up a cannonball and take it up to him. Now, Shami must be very young in this, because look at the size of him compared to the trainer there. And I'm pretty sure that it's a him in this in the context of this game. Um, the name Shamu has been given to different walkers um, at SeaWorld, all after the original Shamu, who was a female in the um, in the 70s. Um, hit the dash button. Yes. There we go. Hit the button. Fireworks happen. Action button. Can figure out which one that is. Yeah, that was it. <clears throat> and then we've got a tile matching puzzle, which we control with the stylus. Um, on GBA, this is done just by uh, moving the cursor with the directional pad and then highlighting the tiles. Obviously, I think this was done on DS first and then backported to the GBA with just button controls. <laughs> Designed with the DS in mind, I believe. Hopefully this little cutscene shows up a bit better. Oh yes, very good. 3D graphics. Nice. This was a series of stills on the GBA. So here we see the plot of the game. Um, the Kraken has attacked SeaWorld. <laughs> um, you find out later that the, the problem here is Poseidon. So. In other games, such as Fathom, um, Neptune was the character you're trying to help, um, and specifically his daughter. But here, Poseidon is the bad guy, um, and he's trying to raise Atlantis from the ocean floor. And um, what's wrong? Up again. Okay. Some giant squid just destroyed Sea World. Okay, so that's what I wanted to get to. I got to this part in the GBA game, so we're going to switch over to that now. So I can struggle a bit less in controlling it. Um, hang on a sec. Yep, okay. Yes, Horatio is a helper in this game. He's a manatee. Oh yeah, that's much easier. <laughs> um, so yeah, ruined SeaWorld, if I only. Um, da, 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 da. Oh gosh, I got to catch up a lot on um, chat here. Tony's talking about um, a game. His brother Brian had this game, although I'm not sure what game he's talking about now because I'm way behind on chat. So, yes, da, da, da. Tamagotchi. Okay. So, Tony, are you talking about this game that your brother had and um, getting through the tutorial? Because, yes, good. Um, he's also mentioning that in the second Tamagotchi Game Boy game, you could raise uh, a whale. Yeah, the Shamu. He's talking about the Shamu one. His brother had it. Um, what platform did he have it on? And Gibbon is now playing Ikachan. <laughs> he's impressed by that one. <laughs> cool. Okay, so... Here we are with our two button controls. Oh, we do have shoulder buttons on GBA as well. Um, let's talk about SeaWorld. I, I, I've talked before about how cetaceans are very smart. Um, and obviously SeaWorld has come under a lot of criticism over the years uh, from certain activist groups because well, it's clear from the condition of their whales and dolphins that they do not thrive in captivity. Their life expectancy is much worse. Um, if you've seen any anything about sh any of the shamus, um, which is a name that again they just give to whichever dolphin, whichever um, orca they're using right now in their shows. And orcas are dolphins, by the way. They're they're the same. Um, uh, what do they call before super family? There's an infra order of cetaceans. Ugh, it's all it's all confusing. Um, um, okay, 
uh, it, yeah, biological classifications are complicated. Um, there is no scientific distinction between whales and dolphins. They're all in the same infraorder of cetaceans. Um, it's an informal distinction that there's a difference between dolphins and whales. Um, and porpoises is the third group in that um, infraorder. Um, yeah, stuff. Anyway, I was saying about SeaWorld, they're, they're not nice. Like, the, the whales, the dolphins, they aren't meant to live like that. Um, and you often see Shamu with a curled over fin. Um, that's known as a collapsed dorsal fin, and that's something that happens um, rarely in the wild, but commonly in captivity, and there's a number of possible reasons why. Um, it could be due to malnutrition, or them having to hang out with their fins sticking out above the water where it's not supported as much, or possibly um, it does happen due to damage, but um, you know that's not always the case in captivity. It could be caused by stress. Um, basically, a bunch of negative factors that exist for these dolphins that could be causing that um, fin to be curled over like that. Um, it's it's a symptom of <laughs> them being in in um, you know. In living in bad conditions that they really shouldn't be. Um, oh, okay, we found an Atlantean artifact that lets Horatio the Manatee communicate with me. Okay, see, that's interesting. So already the setup of this thing is pretty Echo-like, kinda, you know, adjacent. <laughs> um, I think it seems like the levels are a bit more linear. Um, possibly. Uh, so I'm supposed to go somewhere now. I wasn't really paying attention to where he told me to go. Do -do -do. But, you know, this game looks okay. Um, it's got a slightly pre-rendered style, slightly. Um, Music's cheerful. Um, ah, stupid baddies. Lionfish and so on. Look how ruined the human world is. Ah, pulling a chain, are we? Okay. Cool. I'm sucked in. I'm playing. I'm playing this game. Uh, I'm. Very absorbed by the gameplay. It seems uh, intended for younger audiences, from what I read. Um, yeah. Gibbon says this looks great with the 3D background and HUD stuff. What's going on? Oh, he's talking about Ikachan. Um Yeah, it is different from the version I showed off. The one I, the one I showed was the um, freeware PC release from the original 2000 release. Um, the version you're playing has been remastered by Nicholas, just like Cave Story was. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about what they changed in it, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, he's saying there was more maze sections to get the hat and um, iron head hasn't been mentioned yet so yeah it seems pretty different ika chan on 3ds um tony's saying that his brother brian had the ds version of this game he's gonna go boot up tamagotchi ocean just for me i'd love to hear more about that and um yeah we'll see what we can do about that tell me more when we get up to the tamagotchi section of this stream um but he's also telling me about SeaWorld. He says SeaWorld is dead. They're bleeding money. The one in San Diego in California is quickly becoming the least visited theme park in California. 
yeah, that's probably a result of that Blackfish documentary that really highlighted the, you know, how bad how badly off these orcas are living in captivity. Um, it's really not good for them. Um, and of course, Seawall did, would deny that they're in any kind of distress, but um, on top of you know the physical evidence in the orcas themselves, there's their behavioral evidence. You can easily read um, online about uh, these captive orcas during shows or during training, um, attacking and even in some cases killing their trainers. Um, oh, now there's penguins. Okay. I'll find a trumpet and scare away the penguins. <laughs> That's a bit weird. <laughs> Do they have penguins in California? What are they doing here? Okay, I got a chest. I don't know what that does. Um... Oh, a map, lovely. Uh... Okay, so down from here. Down here? Yes, okay. That's useful. I'm kind of enamored with this game. I kind of want to play it on um, DS now. That's cool. Anyway, um, yeah, I was talking about orcas killing people. Uh, they're unpleasant, but um, it's true. Tap, tap, tap. Like, they're not happy, and yeah, they, they will sometimes attack their trainers. Mm. Anyway, SeaWorld's kind of bad, and I, like, this game, I guess, at its release would have been directly supported them, but I'm using it here as a means to talk about how they treat their animals badly, so I guess that's, that's an okay way of, um, yeah, using the game these days. Oh. Help me find my egg. Okay, cool. Yeah, not bad. I like this game. Um, I will look into this more later. <laughs> Whether I play it on stream or just on my own time, I'm pretty impressed. But anyway, that's the handheld version of this game. Um, why don't we have a little go with the real deal? And I will quit this and open up a very appropriately named emulator dolphin the dolphin emulator now yeah, that's not working why is that not working Okay, there we go. I've got my Wii U controller adapter plugged in. <laughs> Tony says, they're not kind of bad, they're really bad. Yeah, SeaWorld, bad, unethical. Um, see, this is the way an orca should be, free, swimming in the ocean. And that's what you do over the course of the game, but um, it's kind of this propaganda where, you know, Shamu's doing it to save SeaWorld because he loves it so much. It's ridiculous. Um, but, you know, if it reminds me of Echo, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Obviously, this is an Echo caliber quality kind of game, but let's see what they did with the main console version. Yes, we're going to continue without a memory card. Oh, SeaWorld. So SeaWorld is the section of the game that has unlockable extras. Yep, far camera, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm getting some audio glitches here, but uh, yeah, anyway. Another fantastic day at SeaWorld. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to meet Horatio in the first level in this version. Um, oh my. Tony, I wouldn't listen to that guy. Welcome to SeaWorld Adventure Park. Oh my. I'm Horatio the Manatee. 
Oh, this does not sound right. The awesome picture of Shamu, the powerful and majestic killer whale. I think I made a little better just now. By a green and blue circular bar, and has corals and seashells all around it. Oops. <laughs> I was trying to close a few programs to make it run better, but I accidentally shut the game down. Oops. Hope this works. Sorry, amateur mistake. Um, yeah, Tony's saying he used to listen to a Disney podcast. One of the hosts went on a huge soapbox about how SeaWorld is being attacked by eco-terrorists and the sea life is better off there than in the wild. Yeah. And that's why he said he used to listen to it. Yeah. I hear you, buddy. Let's go back to the fantastic world of SeaWorld. Welcome to SeaWorld Adventure Park. Oh, I can't skip. Oh, yes, I can. I've skipped ahead. So here we are in our tank, which seems a little bigger now. Uh, I've got a few different abilities here. I, I somehow made a bubble around myself. So these are my collectibles. I'm gonna pick up some krill. Nom nom nom. Now I have a few other abilities that are different to the handheld version. So I can use the A button, I think. Yeah. Tail smash. And B does this sonar attack kind of thing. It's a bit you know, less smooth than an echo where it just happens straight in front of you wherever you're facing. It does make Shamu stop and um, do this animation where he... Yeah, he um, sends out the pulse or whatever. So this is a bit more of a clunky tutorial than in the other version. But also the performance of the emulator isn't so great while I'm streaming, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I can get rid of mines. Some, for some reason there's a mine in my tank here at SeaWorld. Okay, I didn't think they were treating the dolphins that badly. <laughs> Crystals with a K. Okay, so now we're in Star Fox Adventures. Um... Yeah, so that's a defensive move. Awesome! Awesome! I like that Horatio has voice acting. Um, special behavior. That's a really weird way of putting it. I guess that's um, SeaWorld parlance. Okay, so I can use the sonar. Cool. So what now, buddy? Oh, that's the tutorial done. <clears throat> so let's see how the Kraken looks in this version. Wow, pretty cool. Yep. I think part of the poor performance comes, comes from having the OBS window open at the same time and it sort of rendering the gameplay window again. You can handle it with some um, emulators and so on, but I think this one's a bit taxing on my processor too. I'll allow that perhaps. Great, yeah, I did the tutorial. Congrats. Let's see what the real game is like. Ooh, Floyd the Kraken, some kind of chase level. Swim away quickly. Flee from the crash. Yeah, here we go. To complete this crash mission. Bandicoot style. Give me the jams. The crystals. 
No, this one. Yeah, my buttons do nothing. I'm just moving around. Auto scroller. Yeah, so I don't know where I'm swimming through right now. There, with all these mosaics on the walls. Perhaps I'm in Atlantis already? Mm, I don't know. But the background looks pretty nice. Colourful. All that. Graphics are decent. I don't know how, how, how often this kind of chase scene happens in the game. Also, that squid is kind of swimming backwards. Usually, <laughs> they'll swim head first and move their tentacles to propel them forwards. It's kind of working in reverse right now, and it's kind of funny to look at. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's got to attack you as well, so... Whatever. Um, yeah, I, I know mostly this game is that 2D gameplay, even though it has 3D graphics. You're usually moving on a plane. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I still got 20. Even though I missed one earlier. And that was apparently some objective. Alright. Yeah, Shemi wants to save SeaWorld because they brainwashed him, I guess. Mission success. Mission success. What's up next? After showing off his strength, the Kraken holds Horatio in a cell. Oh my. Find the anchor and break the chains attached to it. The rocks will break. Shamu's quick thinking worked. The Kraken is too big it's for a his little bit and ceases his chase for now. Kraken is up to something for sure. You know, Be squids careful. are really good at he might getting into enclosed dangerous. spaces and squishing themselves up to squeeze through small What's cracks. A hole? By the way, I'm Maybe pretty sure that's Comic Sans. The, ratio, the mm. Kraken's crystals give Shamu magic abilities. Oh, magic abilities. This is Echo. Magic crystals giving you powers. I feel like the influence is there slightly. Mm. Yeah. I am stuff. trapped. Rescue me and complete. <laughs> I am trapped. Great. You found a hacker crystal. Yes, I did, Horatio. So look how colorful this is. It's quite nice. I like it. Oh, I, I absolutely pressed a button and that caused him to do a stupid thing. I just want to go a little faster. Found a silver key. Puzzles, huh? Oh, that was dodgy. <laughs> um, okay. How do I know which way is the right way up? Oh, uh, okay, I did it. Unlock the door. Yeah. The game looks pretty good. Um, the controls aren't great. You found a gold key. I'm still unsure about the level design. I haven't seen much of it so far, but it seems pretty simplistic. There's just crabs holding signs that say this way. Man. It's like they have no confidence in the player at all. In that way, very unecho like. Super health. Super health. What does that mean? And not only are there crabs holding signs to point, there's also giant glowing arrows on the screen. And yes, I could turn those off in the options, it's true. I saw that option before. But yeah. 
I don't want to do this puzzle. Let's be finished here with <laughs> Shamu. Shamu's, what's it called? Shamu's Deep Sea Adventure. So yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's just too bad that it's so tied up with this um, horrible sea world thing. Uh, oh well. We know the truth. They don't enjoy it. Anyway, let's move on. Oops. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Do, 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 do. Okay. So that's that done. Okay. Here's a big one. The next game we're playing is known as Laser Dolphin. It is pretty cool. There we go. So this is the demo. Um, you can get the full version from the website of the developer, who are known as Dingo Games. They're also a two-person development team, just like uh, what was it earlier? I don't remember. One of the, one of the very early games, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, let's just let the game speak for itself. Action. Yeah, here we go. Let's cut some. Yes. The Prime Minister has been abducted by aliens. So who do you call? <laughs> I love the flipper picking up the phone. It's probably wisely, so you need a spaceship. Back in the 80s, a UFO crashed into the ocean. We were never able to recover it. Search for this UFO. It is our best hope of saving the Prime Minister. Be careful, laser Dolph dolphin. Set your laser to kill. So this game also using Comic Sans, but I feel like they're doing it with a sense of irony and with their tongue in cheek. So yeah. Alright, so laser dolphin. This is our next laser game. Sorry, our next dolphin game. <laughs> I didn't mention of course that uh, Shamu was made in 2005. This game also came out in 2005 for the PC and Mac. Um, I don't remember how much it costs, but um, it was also released on iOS. And I think it's about five bucks there, something like that. Um, so I have different ways of controlling Laser Dolphin. I can point the cursor and then hold space to swim in that direction, or I can use WASD to uh, move myself manually, um, which is more useful when you're getting into the action-y parts with the shooting because there's, there's obviously two components to this game, the dolphin part and the laser part. So, um, oops, shouldn't have hit a retry. Well slipped. Uh, yes. So we use this, the cursor button, uh, the left click to shoot our laser. So yeah, laser dolphin. <laughs> it's like, it's an absurd name just right off the bat, but it's also, an absurd premise and kind of hilarious but yeah you're a dolphin with a laser on your head just strapped right onto your back um, and we have to save the Prime Minister from aliens it's pretty perfect really um, <laughs> you know it's it's not quite echo movement but um, it is quite uh, smooth and responsive. Um, it's fun. It's it's pretty simple. The graphics have a slightly cheesy 3D feel, and you know, the background's pretty basic, but like it's decent action um, gameplay. So oh yeah, I can charge as well. I can charge my laser. Up. Got a better shot. And I seem to have lots of health, so man, laser dolphin, pretty great. Yeah, yeah, Tony, that's right. Um, Echo is quite realistic um, in terms of, I guess, the, the backgrounds and environments. Uh, at least until you start meeting aliens and stuff. But um, here we see turtles with dynamite strapped to them. I don't know why the sea life in this game in particular is working against you in this way. Um, 
why they're in league with the aliens. But yeah, I, I think it's it's fun to play this game. Um, I don't really know how the iOS version controls. I was thinking of maybe buying that and playing it through the game that way instead of um, buying the PC version. But I don't, yeah, so I don't know how that version controls exactly. How it handles movement and shooting. Um, cause you can obviously shoot in any direction. Oops. And there's the problem with games with lots of clicking. Just because you can click outside your window and accidentally switch OBS input. Yeah. Oh, Tony, how oh, cool. Why do the creatures hate laser dolphin? Why would they why would they be like that? Yeah, Tony, this is, this game is a good parody. Like it knows what it's doing. Turtles with dynamite strapped to their backs, yes. It's it's pretty great. Very pleased with this one. And yeah, worth supporting indie developers like that. Um, Dingo Games. Uh, oh, I got a power up. So now I have homing rockets. And that is on a timer. That yellow bar under my helper. Um, yeah, Dingo Games. A Canadian small studio husband and wife team, actually. Just the two of them. I probably mentioned that already. Um... They've got a few other games that have a similar graphical style. Um, a game called, what's it called? Clumsy Cat, also on iOS. Where, just like in the game Cat Lateral Damage, you're, you're a cat who's been left home alone and you have to go and cause as much damage to your owner's property as you can. Um, they also happen to have a game called Tasty Blue. It's sort of a sequel or successor to two of their earlier games that were called Tasty Planet. Um, Tasty Planet games are sort of, they're kind of uh, Katamari clones, but sort of from a top-down perspective. You play as a ball of grey goo from the popular uh, nanotechnology scare tactic thing, um, or thought experiment or whatever. And your goal is to absorb everything on Earth and become a gigantic ball of goo. Um, Tasty Fish, no, Tasty Blue is uh, a similar concept. Oh, really, it's another, it's an extension of the fish survival genre that we were talking about before when we looked at Fish Dude. Um, where basically you eat small fish to survive and grow bigger. You do kind of get to absurd sizes as you uh, eat and grow. So it's kind of funny like that. Um, you start as a dolphin. Um, sorry, you start as a goldfish. Dolphins are the brain, what can I say? Um, and yeah, you can grow to be a giant goldfish. Uh, there were two extra playable characters in that one. I think a shark and... Is it a dolphin? What's the other one? I don't remember. Um, I don't think it's a dolphin or I would have put more <laughs> attention onto it to getting it on the stream, but yeah. Tasty Blue, check that out if you want to. Um, having a playable shark also brings up that other subgenre of aquatic games that um, have some prominence. Um, sort of a subgenre where you play as a shark. Uh, there's a Jaws tying game, Jaws Unleashed, where your your Jaws, the shark, and you have to eat all the swimmers. Um, uh, it's a 3D game that was a couple console generations back. Yeah, I think that got some attention at the time. Um, but there's, there were older ones in the same vein as well. Um, sort of a subversive, cathartic kind of cause carnage, eat all the people, I think. Um, video games, what can I say? So yeah. Okay, that's the end of the demo, as far as playing normal levels. Um, 
there's a lot more to it. As you can see on the select screen, there's four different planets to travel to on your quest to rescue the Prime Minister. Um, and a level editor mode where you can build your own uh, courses. Excuse me. Um, but of course there's other modes, so we'll try those out. Stunt mode. Do tricks. Okay, I don't know how to do tricks, but <laughs> let's do this and then we. Okay, cool. 180 plus bogus entry. Okay, so perfect entry. There we go. Single flip. Yeah, so it's sort of a <laughs> skateboarding type thing. You have to... 720. Yeah, yeah, nice. Using the cursor, we'll just do flips like this. <laughs> I like that. Uh, okay, backflip and front flip. No, okay, I counted as a 540. <laughs> yeah, so that's a silly little mode they added. Ooh, here we go. Didn't realize there were trick hoops to jump through. So we'll jump through a hoop and do a flip. Nice. Of course, our bogus entry means we didn't get a good score. Yeah. Oops. Gotta get a bit more speed up. Get through these hoops. Yeah, cool stuff. Ah, uh, still two minutes left. Never mind, we'll just quit it. <laughs> I think we've shown off stunt mode there. Now what's race about? Get through the hoops as fast as you can. Easy enough. Whoops. Okay, this might be a little easy with spacebar and cursor. Hmm, I like how the perspective changes on the hoops. That's not really the case with any of the other graphics in the game. It's mostly 2D um, backgrounds, but these objects are rendered in 3D, obviously. Um, yeah. Hope I don't get penalized too much for missing hoops back there. Oops. Oh well. Ah, yes, you gotta get them all. <laughs> yeah! Uh, Tony says, I love this game. That's cool. Yeah, I um, posted about this on a couple of discords and um, people were very enamored with the concept and the name. Um, <laughs> how well that translates into game sales and them appreciating the gameplay, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's, it's absurd on its face and, and a very fun concept, very fun idea. So. That's Laser Dolphin. Um, will he rescue the Prime Minister? It's up to you. <laughs> so, yeah, let's quit that one now and we'll see what's next. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I can do that. This is a game I got long ago. I, feel, I believe it was in Humble Indie Bundle 1. Uh, stop, stop. Let me get through the thing. Okay, missed the logo there of Ambrosia, the publisher. Bitblot is the uh, developer. Um, uh, coincidentally, this is also a two-person game. Um, Alec Holauqua, sorry, Alec Holuka, and Derek Yu um, made this game together. Uh, I've got a cursor in the middle of the screen. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. So yeah, uh, this. I guess would be my first exposure to this whole genre um, and this more explicitly was um, uh, inspired by Echo the Dolphin um, but it's it's a really beautiful game um, it looks great it sounds great um, the verse flows throughout Aquaria. yeah I think we can skip this um, I just want to show you some Far of the gameplay I can remember, I came so yeah Protagonist has amnesia, so you know, meh, but um, there is some twists that, to that that happen later on in the plot. <clears throat> the concept is that there's a, this, this song that um, is fundamental to the world, and um, Naja is a sort of mermaid person who can tap into this song, and she can um, sing, much like Echo, to use different uh, magic powers. So it's, uh, dare I say it, a bit like Laser Dolphin <laughs> in that you can move with the arrow keys or you can move with uh, aiming your cursor and um, uh, swimming like that. And Spacebar gives you a little boost. But it's a vast, vast game world. It's, um, I guess it's been described as a Metroidvania. Uh, you 
can, you know, you have a huge world to explore, I think. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we can move that around, but it's it's much bigger than, it's much bigger than this. There are a lot of different areas um, to go between and explore. And yeah, all, sides, all sorts of things in the environment, it all looks great. Um, uh, Naj is a cool protagonist. Um, you meet some other characters as you go on. Uh, only a couple, but yeah, it's it's really it's just a nice experience to stop. I don't care. Stop telling me these tutorial stuff. I want to show this world anyway. So yeah, singing um, can be used in your environment. So in this case, we use it to open a seed pod and get an item. Um, there's a crafting system where you can use things you find to make different food, um, which can increase your stats or, or buff your when stats, I guess. Um, Story health and all that stuff. I was wise to use the full range of and man, it's been so long since I played this. With a powerful thrust of my legs, my wet feet <laughs> would propel me forward. Yes, yes. Leaving my pursuers in my wake. Um, the, the voice the voice actors are not included in that two-person development team I mentioned. Um, yeah, so that's health. You can, uh, I mean, you've seen it a couple times now, but there's, you can sort of grab onto edges and then boost away from them. Um, As I sang, I could feel the verse Naja verse. is able to briefly, um, yeah, you, go. you can go above the water briefly the and like jump off land forms sometimes. Yes, yes, blah, blah, blah. You can see the songs you've unlocked here, and then it tells you how to do them. Um, so as you go on, you get more and more powers and transformations and all sorts of things. Um, you know what? Why don't I actually where am I? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll quit now. I'll load up a post-game save I may I've made. Um, <gasps> Tony got his internship at Disney. That's amazing. He says, I think I got it. Congrats very much. Yeah. That's very exciting, Tony. Um, obviously, Tony is the biggest Disney fan I know, so working for them is a dream come true, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, let me know how it goes. So this is post-game save. This is a character you meet later on. Uh, his name is Lee, and um, there's a kind of a romance subplot going on there. Um, it's, it's not too, in, too intrusive on the gameplay at all, really. Um, but let's see. You also find little pets, and I forget what they do, but it's, it's nice having them along the ride, along for the ride with you. Um, in Metroidvania terms, it's a bit like Symphony of the Night's Familiars. Or indeed, uh, Metroid Samus Returns is um, post-game section. Which I do appreciate. Anyway, uh, we didn't quite get there just now, but this is now just home. Um, these different rooms have different things in them. Uh, let's see, if I go to here, I can find a crafting table that will increase my abilities to. Where is it? It's the crafting. Oh, never mind. What's that? I forget, like, all of what's going on in this game. I think it's only. Yeah, here we go. So if you go here, you can craft more complicated things, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Oh. So yeah, I think the fish attacks enemies and it was attacking a pot for me. Um, yeah, now that I have all the songs, let's show you what a transformation looks like. Um, what's this? Yeah, nature form, I like that one. How was that? Okay. No, that's not it. Um, this is a different one. This, I think, extends your boost. You see it's pink. I think it goes further. Um, let's change back. What was that one? Like that? No. What's the other one? Dang it. I, ha I, I used to have some muscle memory, I'm sure. Alright. There we go. So that's nature form. That's pretty cool. Um, you can get like plant powers and you can throw seeds um, that grow into plants. Charge it up. Boom. Okay, uh, what else? 
The one you use most is energy form. And which one is that? Wait, didn't I do that one? Yeah, okay. And um, there's sort of, as you explore the world, um, you see uh, the ruins of former civilizations and uh, different ones you sort of gain these transformations from them so you become like they were so there's a race of beings that look a little bit like this and you get the ability to shoot from them and that lets you deal with enemies like that and yeah giant fish with its jaw seeming to be stuck open for some reason <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so you see all kinds of strange and also familiar sea life uh, throughout this game. And yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, yeah, check it out, I guess. <laughs> Given Singh, he loves it. He, he already loved this game, so yeah. Again, no dolphins. Well, I, I think there might be dolphins and whales somewhere in the game, but you don't play this one. Um, but certainly in the same vein. But that's enough of that. Um, Tony, uh, you were talking about Tamagotchi stuff. Um, just before we started, he came in to chat and started saying, oh, there's this, um, there's this thing where you could download mini games into a certain Tamagotchi system. I don't know if it's this one specifically, but I just got a random image to look at. Um, and it's this, it's this very ephemeral thing because you could play these minigames but only if you had downloaded them onto like a card and then transferred them to your game somehow. <laughs> um, it's sort of like the, the impression I got was something like a Dreamcast VMU minigame or a PlayStation Pocket Station uh, LCD game or something. But um, since we were talking about Dolphin games, he was like, oh. Tony, um, if he if he knows one thing, it's Disney parks. But if he knows another thing, it's Tamagotchis um, or Rhythm Heaven. But anyway, um, yeah, he was keen to share information about this. Um, yeah, basically, it's a mini game where you can play as a dolphin, and you just have to collect things and move around. It's it's quite simple, as you can expect from the tiny LCD screen of a. Um, uh, Tamagotchi, but yeah. Okay, he's telling me to look up a Tamagotchi peas. Um, oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's very cute. So this is the one that he's directing me to, and okay, so it's a much more detailed color screen than what is on a traditional Tamagotchi. Um, but this is the one that has a dolphin mini game. So, yep, just gonna briefly mention that. Um, and yeah, final thing to talk about because I've, I've pretty much showed off all the dolphin games that I could find um, and that I was planning on showing today. And it's been a lot of fun. So I've talked a few times about Ed Annunziata the creator of Echo the Dolphin, um, and this is the image we started on. He had a Kickstarter in 2013 for a spiritual successor to Echo um, called The Big Blue, and um, by April of 2013, uh, it hadn't got, it hadn't reached its um, uh, goal, so he didn't get enough money to become a successful Kickstarter. Um, at the time he was talking about, at the time of the failure of the, of the Kickstarter, he was talking about continuing the development in the form of The Little Blue, a preview slash prologue slash um, demo for The Big Blue, and kickstarting that separately or developing it separately um, and releasing it uh, to get funds or to get awareness or whatever for The Big Blue. Now, even that project, the Plan B project, um, Nothing seems to really have come of that, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Tony's going on at great length about this Tamagotchi thing, so we'll click this link for him. 
this is the character you play as. Um, Crescent Iru, uh, Irukachi. Um, the games and other DLC for the toy were based on anime events. So in the arc of the anime at the time, it was revolving around Dol Dolphin Tamagotchi, traveling to the future and other weird stuff. Sounds very Echo, I like it. Um, so for the Tamagotchi Peas, um, I guess they had extra games uh, uh, distributed for them, like mini games, that were tying into anime stuff at the time. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, but as he told me in the chat, this game is basically impossible to play and he, he used to have access to it, but he doesn't anymore. Um, it can't really be downloaded or anything. Yeah, shame. But speaking of other vaporware, big blue and little blue, um, you know, if only, uh, the last game we played there, Aquaria, is from 2007. Um, that's the most recent uh, dolphin-based, you know, underwater exploration kind of game. Um, not dolphin-based, but dolphin-adjacent. <laughs> uh, and the Shamu game before that in 2005 is, is, is um, the most recent one that explicitly involves a dolphin. So, you know, it's been a while, but that's okay. Um, I hope I've showed today that there's a lot of stuff out there to explore if you're interested in the topic. Um, maybe uh, a couple of them are almost as good as Echo, <laughs> um, especially for the time they were released uh, in the case of the early ones. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I had prepared for today. So I'm glad we uh, had so many <laughs> games to play through. Well, I'm, I'm pretty um, tired after all that actually, because yeah, a lot of swapping around, a lot of talking. I didn't even get to half of my dolphin facts. Um, did I mention that uh, because of their high level of intelligence, um, Several countries, including Chile, Costa Rica, Hungary, and India, have declared um, cetaceans as non-human persons and giving them some rights. Uh, they've banned any capture and import for entertainment purposes in those countries. Um, yeah, dolphins, dolphins are pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I've enjoyed this, playing these games. Uh, a bit like Echo, remind me of it. And I hope you have too. And yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that can be done in a lot of video games, aren't there? But anyway, thanks for joining me, folks. Um, and I'm glad I introduced a couple of interesting looking games to some people here today. Yeah, that's it. So we'll see you next time. Um, I might follow up on one or two of these games in a longer form stream at some point. But until then, um, yeah, goodbye. Goodbye.